You're good. Good morning, my friends, wherever you happen to be. It's Sam Villa this morning, this evening, if you're on the international side, for my friends that are covering us on international, thanks for being here. Uh, today, what I want to do is it's all about texturizing techniques. And I think texturizing hair is really an awesome, awesome tool in terms of us knowing the what, the how, the why, and most importantly, the when. Most recently, we haven't been texturizing hair that much. We've been relying a lot on disconnection to give us that kind of movement, volume, or the texture that we're looking for. Hi, Anna. Good morning, my dear. Hey, Trisha from NYC. Thoughts and prayers are with you, my dear. So what I want to do is I want to focus on, I want to give you at least, time permitting, at least 16 techniques this morning or this afternoon or this evening, wherever you're at. And they're all going to be about the fabric. So let's talk about texture. I don't know about you, but when I started in this industry, I was taught that uh, precision cutting. Everything had to blend and everything was perfect. Cross-checked everything. And then as time went along, we discovered something. We discovered that if we kept cutting everything blunt, it collapses. So... What we started to do was, I'll never forget when the first salon I worked at, it was called Metamorphosis in San Mateo, California. And I worked for a man by the name of Bob Kincaid. And Bob came to me one day and he said, Sam, you need to learn to point cut. You need to learn to slice hair. And once again, I was like, Bob, that's not how I was taught. And he said, Sam, your taste will be a journey in this industry, meaning that you're going to learn a lot of different things, and it's important that you embrace them because it's not about you. It's about that particular person that happens to be sitting in your chair. And I thought, wow, that's interesting. But And he said, so you want to expand your knowledge. Don't get just stuck on one thing. So Bob said, if you keep cutting everything blunt, it collapses. Listen to the last client that you just had. She works with a round brush. So when you cut everything, block it off where it's precise and a cross-check and it's precise, you don't get the movement. You get this beautiful precision cut that has weight to it. So he said, so I want you to just give the, the hair a little tickle and watch it move. And I did, and it was really heavy. He said, so let's point cut that edge. And he taught me how to point cut. And I realized, and I, I thought, oh, wow, the response is different. And he sh showed me, and I hit it with a round brush, and I was able to get the look that I wanted. So let's talk about something. First of all, what we need to understand is two things. Number one, the fabric we work with, which happens to be hair. <laughs> so you have to, under <laughs> it's like I'm kind of trying to get used to this idea of going backwards. All right. So you have to understand the fabric that you're working with. <laughs> Sam, keep your hands out of your hair. I know I'm trying. <laughs> so you have to understand, guys, the fabrics. Let me give an example. A fashion designer understands the limits and the capabilities of the fabrics they work with. So in other words, they understand, good morning, Zoma. They understand, Juan Joe from España, España. I just sent you guys a video yesterday. Just thoughts and prayers are with you for my friends in Spain. We love you and we're thinking about you. So the idea then is understand the fabric. So fashion designers, they understand the limits and capabilities of silk. Silk fabrics, shiny, has a little more weight to it. They understand the limits and capabilities of wool. Wool versus silk. They might fall in love with silk, but they have to understand if they want to create something different, they choose a different fabric. So let's understand the limits and capabilities of fine hair. Let's understand the limits and capabilities of coarse thick hair. Let's understand the limits and capabilities of curly hair. If you understand the fabric, then that's going to tell I mean, then you have to understand what technique goes with that fabric. Then you have to understand what tool goes with that technique that enhances that fabric. So there's a lot of things to, to think about when we texturize hair. It's just not about picking up a tool. Check out the tool I brought out. It's not about just picking up a tool and then going and texturizing. You have to understand what the tool does, when to use it, and what kind of hair to use it on. So now, what did I just pick up? This goes back to, gosh, maybe late 1970s when I was in London, maybe 1980, and I went to a show called Salon International, and I saw a man by the name of, Irvin and Rita Rusk. That's right. Way back then. And they had a booth and they were awesome. They were very well known within the uh, UK market. Very well known. And I'm popular now throughout the world, Rusk. But the idea was he had these shears he called alphas and betas. Alphas, gammas, betas. 
And I'm not sure which one this is, but I bought all three sets. They did different things with the hair. It's basically a shear that took out the texture of the hair. So tools were made to complement reducing weight, taking, removing weight, or creating texture by using this particular shear. Once again, this comes from the Russ family back in the early, late 70s, early 80s. And you can see it's pretty old. I've used it quite a bit. Uh, tools, once again, a blending shear. When do I use? Some people call this a thinning shear. I call it a blending shear. Um, I don't like using the word thinning because it tends to scare a client behind the chair. So a, a thinning shear, basically we know it as it thins out the hair, but I'm going to show you various ways to use this. Then we have our third, another tool. This is a razor, you know, knowing when to use a razor. Now, I work with a razor with a guard. I just like to use a guard. Some states you, you can't work with a, a razor without a guard. In some states you can't. Now, there's uh, some people that I really recommend to follow that are awesome with a razor. First of all, the master himself, Nick Orojo, is incredible with a razor. Make sure you follow and watch him. And he works with a cutthroat, no guard. Uh, Ruth Roach and Chris Barron, two great people, Coach Chris Barron and Ruth Roach. They work with a razor, and they're awesome, awesome, really, really good with a razor. You'll see them using a straight edge most of the time, with me, which means a straight edge with no guard. Now, this is a straight edge with a guard. But understanding how a razor works is really important, and I'm going to talk about that first. So we've talked about understanding the fabric, understanding the tools. Now let's talk about the techniques themselves. So first of all, let's understand the fabric and why we would want to alter the density or alter the shape of a particular hair shaft. So let's take a look at this. And let's talk first, come with me here to the board right here. And let's talk first about what each tool does, okay? So if I take just a blunt shear, just a blunt shear that you can work with, okay? Just take a blunt shear and I go in and I cut, that actually blocks off the hair shaft. That's what that does. So we know that. If I come in and I work with a blending shear, with a, or some people know it as a thinning shear, this is what we get. If this is the hair, okay, then what I'm actually getting is, I'm getting what we refer to as negative space in between. So negative space is actually what you can see. So, so take a look at this. Right now, see the, how you can see through it and you see the white background of that? That's negative space. Positive space is all of the density in the hair itself. So it's important that we understand the language in terms of positive and negative space. So that's what a blending shear does. It reduces the weight. So it goes in and it cuts it, just reduces it. Now, how, many, how far apart the teeth are, that's going to determine how much or how much, how the amount of hair that you're going to take out, depending on the distance of the teeth in between. This is our reversible blending shear, which I mean reversible. If I take a section of hair and I go in and place the blunt blade on the bottom and the weaving blade on top and I close, then what happens is I'm getting a blunt line underneath. Now that hair is much more pliable to go under. A great technique with Asian hair. If I turn this over, now this is some, not anything I made up, my friends, all factual here. When I was in Malaysia, I worked in Malaysia, they were using the shear and they would keep flipping it over. And they told me, Sam, they discovered if they put the blunt line on the bottom this way and they get it, they can turn that edge and manipulate it much easier to go under. Now, simply reverse that. If I take the blending shear and I place the blunt blade on top and close, now that blunt line is on the top, hit it with a round brush, and this is going to flip up a lot easier. So you can start to see, guys, in terms of, you know, thinning or blending shear, Remember, I like to say blending uh, to, to Mia because I like to say say that because they th think thinning tends to scare the client when I say thinning. So that's why we use blending. Now, remember, this is a reversible blender. Now, I'm not here to sell you. What I am here to do is to teach you today. So let's go to the razor. Let's talk about the razor now. What does the razor do when we look at it? What the razor does, it does this. It actually makes the hair where we actually carve out that hair shaft. So it does this. So now we have to understand the razor itself in terms of how to work with a razor. If this is a hair shaft, okay, these are three pieces of hair shaft. And you know that a lot of clients out there, they say, Sam, I don't like a razor because of what it does to my hair. So that what we're doing is really, really important on the angle in terms of how you work with it. 
So if the angle of my blade is straight into that, perpendicular to that, then what I'm going to do is the angle is straight in like this, then I'm going to fray that hair. This is one reason why clients might not like it. If I go in, guys, and I come through, I'm going to move this closer so you can see. If I go through and my angle is too steep, okay, then what happens, I'm getting this. And this is so weak down at the bottom that when people brush that, that actually breaks. And that's another reason why they don't like it. So if we take a look at that and we say that that's a vertical 90 degrees, this is a horizontal 90 degrees, and half of that is 45 degrees. That is a really good angle to work with the razor in terms of get that hair to be much more pliable. That has some strength on it, let it yet it changes the hair shaft and it makes it more pliable. Sam, are there any times where you change the angle and you you change it just slightly? Yes, but if I do that, it's very it's much more about the pressure. So this is a no no. It just rips up that cuticle. This is going to be okay as long as you control that angle and you leave some density down here on that particular hair shaft. You just leave it a little thicker. So why would you want to change the angle, Sam? I want to add maybe more weight or less weight on the end of each hair shaft, but understanding the angle. Now that said, here's what we did. Take a look at what we did. What we did here is I look how that swivels. Don't know if you can see it, but that actually, that actually, it actually swivels. So because it swivels, I'm able to control the angle of that blade and adjust it or control it as I'm sliding through. So now let's talk about some techniques. First one I want to share with you is weave with the razor. So let's take a look at it. All right. So let's go right here. Okay. Now when you weave with a razor, why would you want to do this, Sam? I would tend to think that the fabric would be Asian hair. It's thick, coarse hair that has a small amount of movement, barely any. But it is very, very stick straight. Okay, is uh, do I think a razor is necessary? Thank you, Carrie, for asking. Do I think a razor, a new razor, is necessary every cut? I think what you're asking me, Carrie, is a new blade necessary with every cut? Yes, professionally, yes, I recommend a new blade. Why, Sam? I don't want to waste my blades. Well, let me say this: I've seen too many people try to get two haircuts out of one blade. Eventually, what's happening? is you're ripping the cuticle and that's why people don't like it a blade is so delicate the smallest tap on the blade itself will start to dull it it changes it so that's why it's important i really suggest carrie that we do change our blades with every cut that we do even if you're doing just cutting maybe just a fringe you'll know when it starts to pull and you'll feel it all right so let's get back to a technique weave with a razor sam what do you mean weave with a razor all right so what I want to do is I want to take out weight, maybe something like what a blending shear would do. All right. So what I want to do that, I'm going to give it to you vertically first. When I want to do that, we pull this hair out. And now look at this. Watch what I'm going to do. All I'm simply going to do is take the blade and I'm going to simply weave it just like I would highlight. Okay. Now I have an option here. If I want to go in and take out less hair, turn the blade up towards me. If I choose to take out more hair, turn the blade down. So I can take out more hair. See, I'm taking out more. That's right here underneath. Or if I want, and watch what it took out. Let's take a look at that. You can see what it just did. Look at that. Okay. So now when I want to take out weight, but I want to have some type of movement inside, this is just a great way to do it by simply weaving with a razor. Look at this particular section, how it just responds right now. So it's just a, a matter of what do you want that hair to do? Once again, watch now. Sam, I don't understand what you're saying when you say turn it down. Okay, let's go horizontal then. And allow me to show you this technique horizontal. And you can actually see the angle of the blade itself. You'll actually see it turn. All right, so let's go horizontal. Well, Sam, when would you do this vertically and when would you do it horizontally? Understand what the lines do. Horizontal, I'm going to build weight. So watch horizontally. Now let's go in. Let's go in horizontally. Lift my elbow so you can see. Okay, I'll turn it down so you can see. Now I weave like a highlight. Okay, now watch. Now I turn this razor. I can turn it down. Actually, I'm going to jump on this side so that you can see. All right, so that that way it gives you a little bit better view. Okay. All right, watch. All right, let's go here. This way my arm's not in the way that I'm holding this. Okay, all right, so let's take a section. Now watch what I mean. Here's the razor. Okay, I'm going to weave from my right to the left. You control what you weave. Now watch the blade. The blade can turn down. See, I turned down or I could turn the blade up. I turned it up. 
If I turn it up, I'm taking and releasing some of that hair that I weaved. And I'm staying right on a 45. A razor is an emotional tool. The more pressure I hold this, the more hair I'm going to take out. So if you had a bad night last night, watch out. You're going to have a lot of pressure on your grip. So loosen up the grip. And I'll talk about that in a moment. So now I'm going to turn it down in this case. And I'm just going to raise her down. And that's taking out much more weight. When you do these techniques, I encourage you to hold on to that hair and see how much hair you actually take out. So you can kind of get an idea in terms of how these techniques are working. Now, I love this when I want something to have a little bit more of a flicky kind of effect to it. It just gives it that nice lightweight effect. So I hope, hey, Steven, thanks for joining us, Steven. Hope you and your lovely wife are doing well, my friend. So now that's weaving with a razor, turning that up or down, okay? Now, it is said that the razor causes rupture of cuticles and damage to the hair. Is it true? Sonia, that's a great question, depending upon the pressure and the angle of the razor. Remember what I just said. It's an emotional tool. Now, Sam, I noticed that you're cutting with and using it on dry hair. Well, I'm using it for this demo on dry hair so you can actually see the texture right away. There are times when I will break the rule and I will use a razor on dry hair because I want to see the end result immediately as I'm cutting it. But my product of choice is going to be my Redken One United. And I love using this as a cutting lotion, even on dry hair, just to give it a little bit more of a buffer. So it just buffers that cuticle surface. So you just have to be careful. Remember, guys, a razor is a great tool, but it's very emotional depending upon which way you use it. Now, next question. Uh, bookworm forever. Glad you're with us. Does the direction of the cut of the weave technique make a difference in the result aside from weight? What would that be? All right. Let's talk about that. Watch. If I'm here and I go vertical and I come in and I weave, okay, and I say to myself, I want, we know the concept, short hair in front of long gets that hair to have some movement to it. So if I want this hair to move this direction, watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to weave a razor through, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it up so I'm going off to this top hair. So this is the hair that I weave, and that's the hair that I'm cutting. So that when I move this hair this way, it's going to have a natural tendency, common tendency, to move in that direction. So it does make a big difference. Jacqueline, nice to see you. Jacqueline, you don't miss one podcast, do you, my dear? We love you. You are so awesome. Jacqueline Harwood, she's a Redken artist. Make sure you check her out. If she's in your area, I want to attend one of her classes. So Jacqueline has a question. How far away from the scalp do you like to stay when removing weight? Great question. Here's what I don't want you to do, guys. I'm going to continue to work on the same section because i got lots to show you. Watch. Look where I'm at. I'm way out here. What I suggest you do is read the hair. When you hold it, just give it some bend. Where it bends, that's where I'm going to weave the razor. One thing I want you to know is I am not at the scalp, guys. I'm not way down here. You're going to get yourself in trouble. So if I go out here, then what I'm doing is take a look. All I'm affecting is the hair out here. So move where you want, but I do not suggest, Jacqueline, that we go up towards the scalp. Read the hair. Let's take another section. Watch. Watch how I read it. Remember, you can do this vertically or horizontally. Sam, when would you want to do it horizontally? When I choose to get a multi-layered effect. I'm building weight on top of weight, but I'm weaving. When I choose to flatten the shape, I'll go in vertically. So think about what vertical lines and horizontal lines do. So watch again. So here I am. I'm taking the hair. Now remember, you control just like a highlight. Do you want uh, lots of weave, medium weave, light weave? I don't know. You, I'm not a colorist. I don't know what you call it. No, no, no. Ten weave and number one weave. Don't know. But watch. As I weave, okay, now watch. I turned it up. So now look at how look at look at the wrist. It's just my wrist that's doing the action. I'm not here. Eh, eh, look at the angle of the blade. It's so perpendicular to that. I keep it nice and soft. Now this hair will have a natural tendency to start to move back and away. So yes, I would suggest take a look and see which direction do you want to hair to move. If I want it to move this direction, I'm weaving it this way, turning towards that part that I weave so that the hair moves in the direction. So that's a great technique to, to work with, weaving with the razor. I do not recommend on uh, coarse hair. On fine hair, Sam, would you recommend it? Yes, but I would weave very lightly. So I'm weaving. So you control how much you do. Would you use your razor on curly hair? Angie, great question. Me personally, it depends upon the nature of the curl. So if I have something that has a little bit more kind of a uh, uh, soft curl to it, I might go and weave it. The scale, let's set it up, scale of one to 10. One being straight, 10 being really kinky curly. I wouldn't recommend it on a 10, okay, because you're just going to enhance the hair. 
So once again, your question goes back to knowing the fabric. Now there's a person that I've seen use a razor on all types of fabrics. Once again, it goes to back to those three people, Nick Arojo, Ruth Roach, and Chris Barron. I've seen them actually use a razor on curly hair and they're amazing in terms of the results. So, but it takes practice, practice, practice. So important that we remember that as we're going through. All right, so let's go into another one. Now, take a look. Let's go into the front where I have a lot of weight right here. All right, so let's go through and let's take a look at the next technique, which is point cutting with a razor. So let's say that I want to go in and create a little more flickiness here on this end. And the end, is it's, it's really, really in, terribly heavy. All right, so now watch. What I want you to do is just take a section. Now you're gonna you, you work with a razor that has a guard. That's the only way you can do this. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the razor and hold it like I'm writing my name, just like I'm writing my name, okay? And then I'm gonna point it up. So the blade is pointed up. See how I'm doing it? Now practice this, flick, flick, flick. Look at the wrist, flick, 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 okay? Now watch me point cut. Are you kidding, Sam? No, watch me point cut this with that razor. So now all I'm going to do is I'm going to go at an angle. Watch now. I flick, 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 flick. And you can just start to see the hair being removed. Now you can see why I'm using a guard. I'm using a guard because I want to protect my hand. That razor is going to hit your hand. Do not do this with a cutthroat razor. Now look at the response I get out of that in terms of what the hair does. You can just start to see how I get that floaty effect again. So once again, let me show you how to do that. I could take it up above. Look, I'm just taking a section up above, look how I hold that hair, just like I'm going to point cut, just like I'm going to point cut. But instead, you're with the razor. Now, the razor, it goes in at an angle, so it catches the hair, and then you flick it. So here, and you can just see how I'm going in, and you can see how I'm taking out hair. I'm not sure if you can see it in the computer, but hair is coming out. Okay, now watch this section. Look at that section, how it looks, but look how I've been able to get that flickiness and that floatiness by simply using a razor. Now, when you use this point cut with a razor, I really recommend that you use it dry. Go in with dry hair, but once again, spray that section with one united so it acts as a buffer on the razor. Do you use the tip of the razor? or uh, First, I want to go back to the question, barbers. Can a barber work with a razor? I've seen barbers. My dad was a barber. He worked with a razor quite a bit. And what he did was he would use it to kind of uh, on, on my hair sometimes, he would use it with surface razor. And watch Coach Chris Barron, he's an expert at surface razor, where I'm just going through, where you get a little bit more of a blending action. So if I have something where it's really straight hair and I want a little bit more of a blending action, then all I'm doing is using that on a more longer, uh, guy that has longer hair, gives me a really good uh, blending action. Hope that answered that for you. All right, so we've talked about uh, weave with a razor and point toe with a razor. So using the razor weave technique horizontally is a good way to get nice blended layers. Yes, it is. It's a great way to get nice blended layers so you don't see marks in the hair, especially maybe with blonde hair. And I've got some solutions on that too when we layer blonde hair. Uh, see ya. Thanks for the comment on the great content. I'm just getting started. All right, let's move to another one. Rake with a razor. This is one of my favorites, especially on face framing. When I have any type of face framing, which I don't hear, but it's wonderful on face framing when you have that. So watch what I'm gonna do. All I'm simply gonna do is take a section. So now let's take a section. And I recommend you take a section first so that, that way you control how much you're taking out. Now watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pick this in section up. Now watch my hand go underneath. Okay, so my hand goes underneath. Watch here on the flip chart. So I take the section, my hand goes underneath and you comb through this. Then what I want you to do is you're gonna take the razor and you're going to change the angle so you keep it flat. I don't want you to change it diagonal. I want you to keep it flat. Now watch my fingertips. My fingertips are going to slowly just close down the razor. Now remember what I said, the razor is an emotional tool. The more I close down with pressure, the more hair you're going to take out. Now watch my fingers. They're very lightweight. I just slowly, slightly close down the razor. Now watch, I have it flat. Now I just slide out. Now look at what I took out. Now what's happening is, this is just giving me and reducing weight in areas where I want to reduce weight. I find myself using this around my face frames. Watch how I'll come through. Angle is flat, watch me take out hair. Okay, see I'm just taking out hair. Now look how thick this was. So look how you could do this on this thick one length hair. Where for people that say I can't get any sense of volume. 
and they have an online bob, just simply rake through that bob and watch that bob start to pop and have a sense of volume to it. But I love, this is one of my favorite techniques with a razor, uh, raking with a razor in terms of that. Now remember, one thing I said, two things you need to be aware of is make sure this is flat. Next thing is the tension. Watch, I'm gonna take out a lot more hair. Watch, let's make a mistake right. And I pull down on this, look at how much more hair I took out of that. Look at that, you can see how much more hair. Yet maybe once you master it, that maybe that's something you want to want to do. Look at the shape I got out of this right here on that. Just by doing that, so it's just great way to take out weight where you want to reduce it. And I find it really great as a detailing technique. So using the razor weaving technique horizontal is a good way to get nice blended layers. Yes, it is. All right. So now let's go to the next one. Scratch with the with a uh, um, scratch with the shear. Now I'm going to give you something here on for, for fine hair. That a lot of you, when you see me do this, you're going to cringe and go, what is Sam doing? Why is he doing that? So let's talk about fine hair. Fine hair is, is the main issue with fine hair is, Sam, I can't get volume. So how do I get volume, especially in the crown area, Sam, when I can't get it? I just can't get any sense of volume in this crown area. So how would I get the volume with fine hair? First of all, what's the number one thing we suggest? Let's decolorize your hair. Let's highlight it. You know, I'm talking about a fine hair guess. Why? Because it alters the texture. It actually, come on, guys, let's be honest with each other. It creates damage. But in this particular case, it's good damage because we want to alter that texture of the hair. So you damage the hair by decolorizing. But yet again, we've got Redken's bonder. you got the pH bonder. you got everything that really brings that hair back to life. So she can't, she's not chemically dependent, meaning that she can't afford to have a highlight. But she wants volume here. Remember. When you're at the chair, find out what the problems are and have the solutions. Dig for those problems so you can help the client with it. So let's take a look and watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to take our 7-inch dry cutting blade, okay, and I'm simply going to open this up. Now, be very careful when you do this technique. I'm going to scratch with it. So I'm going to grab that very lightly, okay, and I'm using the thumb blade in which to cut with, okay. That's what I'm doing. So I want to go through. And look what I'm going to do. I'm going to take, let's say I want volume in this crown area here. So in order for me to get volume in that crown area, what I want to do is I want to go in and create, let's say, this technique underneath. So I'm going to take a horizontal section at that crown area. We're going to lift up. Okay. Once I'm here, watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to change the angle of that blade. Let's see if I can give you a little bit more light. I'm going to come in a little closer for you because you've got to see this, guys. Okay. So now watch what I'm going to do here, okay? What I'm going to do is I'm going to come through, take that thumb blade, I'm going to lay it flat, and then I'm going to turn it till I feel it catch the hair, and I'm just going to scratch. Now people are going, oh, my God, look at the white, look at the cuticle. Yes, that's right. But what I'm doing is I'm going against, I'm going with the gray of the cuticle, but look what I'm taking out. So I've created the damage underneath. So I basically get that response that I'm looking for. So I get a little bit more volume popping in this area. So once again, this is a great technique for those clients that have fine hair that cannot afford a highlight. So you can alter the texture. So look at where I'm creating. If you're thinking I'm creating, he's creating damage. Yes, but I'm creating the damage underneath. So I scratch. In other words, I'm abusing the cuticle in this particular case because that's the solution to getting fine hair to have volume and have response. I'm not doing it on top. So I do not recommend, please, I do not recommend you do this on the top surface. This is all done underneath. So this is a great technique in which to use. So could we do this with a razor as well as shear? You could certainly do it with a razor. Remember, with a razor, you're going to take out more hair. Yet with a razor, I want that angle the way it should be so that you're not damaging the hair. Allow me to demonstrate. Okay. So let's go through. Okay. And now watch. This is with a razor. Okay. So yes, you can use a razor, but watch what I'm doing. Look how light I am with a razor. Remember, th this razor is so light in my hand, meaning I'm not grabbing it. I'm not grabbing that with tension. Okay. I'm very light with it. And I just lay it down and I just scratch. You'll visually see how much hair you're taking out. So then when I lay this down, look at where I've created those short bits and altered that natural texture, the grain of that hair by just doing that underneath. So this is a great technique. 
And you can use this on fine hair. I absolutely love it when it works with fine hair. So I, it's really important, guys. You, you have to practice these techniques. I have loads of mannequins that I practice these things on before they're tried, true, and tested before I'll teach anything. I just, I don't want to give you gimmicks or things like that. I want to give you these things, these techniques that actually have been very successful throughout my career. All right. So that is a scratching technique that you can use with a shear or with a razor. You have more control with the shears. I have more control with the shears. Plus, let me just be really, really frank, guys. I'm damaging that hair more with a shear than I would with a razor. Okay. So that's important. Really good. Important to understand that. Good morning, Vilma. Hope you're doing good there. Marco, Elizabeth. Uh, thank you for loving the shears. All right, let's go to another technique. Now, this is really interesting. I, I, I really believe that it's it's really important you understand shears and how they work. So let's go to a blending shear. Okay, this is a blending shear. Now it's predetermined how much weight it's going to take out. So allow me to show you something first before I get into that. Let's go back to this. This was my 1970, late 70s. That's right, some of you weren't born. This was my early 80s. I bought this in London. I was showing it earlier in the class for those of you that are just joining us now. So this is predetermined. In other words, if I take a section here, take a slice, and I go in and close, that's predetermining how much hair it takes out. So let's take a look at the white, okay? Come here with me. Watch this now. Let's take just this section here, okay? Now watch me close the shear, okay? And I close it. This thing is so dull. All right. Now watch. Now look at the spacing I got. You can just start to see that spacing that I got out of that. Let's see if I can get her closer for you. Okay. Take a look at that. You can just see the space. Look at the spacing I created. Now that's what this shear does. Okay. Now if you're saying, well, Sam, I can't afford that shear. Okay. So what I want you to do then is to take a blunt shear. Okay. So watch Sammy. Now look at what I just did there. Okay, now watch me execute it right here. I just come through. Now watch. So now I'm going to control how much negative space I'm going to place in by simply weaving. And now watch me come through and watch me just back cut that. Look, at see, I just slide down and back cut that. So I'm not getting such a blunt line. But now watch. Look how I created that space there. Same thing as I've created over through here. Now this is a great, great technique. This is what I call weaving blunt. This technique, watch it here is great for naturally curly hair, watch. So I come in and I weave and I close. On natural curly hair, you wouldn't see that line, okay? So it's a great technique on natural curly hair. Natural curly hair needs length on top, but sometimes those clients want a little bit of volume. This is a trick that I used to do where I would just go in and weave and just get a little bit of hair to pop, but kept the weight. You start to layer that hair out to give them volume, now it starts to get too much expansion. Okay, Stacy. one thing I'm concerned about while razor cutting or using a blending shear is being able to trim all the hair during the next haircut. Any tips? All right, let's go right here where I just cut. Let's go through. Watch this. I want you to watch this really close, guys. Okay, Stacy. here's a great trick that I love to use because when you use these tools, first thing I'm going to recommend is this. Don't over-texturize. A great way to lose a client is to over-texturize. So when you cut hair... Here's what happens. You texturize it, you get this. Give me a yes if you're with me. Just give me a yes. Type in a yes. That's what you get. So now when she comes back, the client may say, Sam, I love that what you did on the top. Can you do it again? If I do it again, what happens is now I get this. Okay. So now I've got 50 short hairs trying to support 20 long hairs, if you follow what I mean. So here's the number one suggestion is this. I want you to texturize your clients every other visit. Let them know if I texture you again, I'm going to over texturize your hair and it's going to get too use words they don't want to hear. It's going to get too thin. It's going to get frizzy. So I'm going to read, I'm going to retexturize, teach them techniques on how to blow dry and enhance that texture, working with irons to enhance that texture. So now watch what I'm going to teach you. So if you say, well, Sam, I want to go back in and get a little bit of that out, get recut some of that texture. I'm talking about recutting this. How do you recut that? That's easy to recut. But how do you get in here and touch that? Watch Sam. Never fear, Sam. He's here. So let's take what I just did. Now watch me do a number three. Watch this number three. I take my three fingers. Watch me put the middle finger underneath here. Now all I'm doing is I use my comb. Now if you can see right here, see that? That's what I just weaved and cut. Now watch me just cut that. 
and I just keep working my way down. Here comes some more. There it is. Look at, look at. See, and I just really just rightly just trim that up and keep looking to see what you've done. So that's a great way to go in and take care of what you just did in terms of texturizing. Now, if you've seen Andrew Carruthers, my man, Andrew Carruthers, the education director, he goes in and he uses that same technique to take care of split ends. So make sure you check that out as he's moving down. So, yes, uh, I think it was Carrie or Sherry. That, that's a way that I would go in to go in and recut what I've done. But you need to do that technique dry. I try it wet and sometimes it just doesn't pop out for me. It seems to pop out a little bit better. Use the spine of the comb once again to get that, that hair out. Let's go look and see if I can show you again. See, I'm just, there it is right there. Okay. Just, I'm just looking for what I just cut. That was that texture right there. I hope you can see it. So now that's from my weave technique. Now just recut that and you're good to go. Give me a yes. If I'm helping you out here, my friends, I'm talking some of these things that we're doing here today. Okay. Just need to know how you're doing. All right. So now let's go back to the blending shear. Now with the blending shear, I'm going to do the same thing. So let's talk about that. Watch. With a blending shear, let's go to this side, okay? Watch how if I do this, okay, if I do this, that's predetermined how much hair comes out. That's predetermined. So let's say I don't want that much hair out, okay? Then what I want you to do is I want you to simply come in and just take it and once again go back to the weave. Place the blunt blade on the bottom, weave the hair like a highlight, and now close and watch what you get in terms of that. So you're not, you're not taking out all of that weight. You're taking out what it is that you weave and you're controlling it. So I really recommend it. That's awesome. What do you recommend for tightly, curly, kinky hair? Thank you, Kara, for the question. That's the one that I just showed you. That's the weave and the bunt. So once again, in case you dismissed it, let me go back to it. That's where you're taking the hair here. Now, natural curly. Imagine this really curly. Imagine it really, really curly. So what I want to do is I'll go in and I'll weave it. Just very, you control how much you weave. You want a, a very light weave, then you just weave just a couple, okay, and close. Now imagine that's kinky curl. That curls up. This stays curly, but now I'm getting a sense of volume to it. It's also a great way to take out weight, some of the natural curly hair. Remember, the more you take out, then what's going to happen is you're going to get more expansion. So natural curly hair that's really kinky curly, I love cutting it dry. No comb, working with my hands only. That's important. Um, I'm going to be doing a all the do's and don'ts of curly hair. Um, Andrew, if you got that date, if you'd be so kind to post that up, that's going to be on one of the Tuesdays, the do's and don'ts of curly hair. And you'll see me cover that really deeply in terms of that. All right. So let's go back to the blending shear. So that's a great way to control what you want to take out. So you can control these guys. In other words, you can go in vertically if you want. Go in vertically to control this. If you go in horizontally, you're building more weight. Watch, look how much I'm taking out. And you can see how much I'm taking out. Now, I love using a reversible blender. Okay, let's talk about this. Now, this is the, excuse me, the invisible. This is the invisible, making sure I've got the right one in my hand. All right, now, I don't want you to get panicked here on what I'm going to do. Okay, so watch. This is the blunt blade. That's the teeth. I'm going to place my hand on that blunt blade and just push the pressure down. And look, at, I'm not cutting my hand. Now, what we did was we over polished this blade so that what we did is when the blade pushes the hair, when the blade closes because it's dull, it pushes there into the teeth. And when I close, I get more of this. Watch, come to me with a board here. So what I get is here's the hair shaft, here's the hair shaft, here's the hair shaft, here's the hair shaft. So when I pull, cut this, when I go to close, I get curved. I get more of a scalp effect out of this. That's the idea of this. Instead of getting this with a blending shear, you get this. This is what I get with a blending shear. I get all of this. Now, look how blocked out that is. That's with a blending shear. Okay. Now, with an invisible shear, because that blade is dull, watch what it's going to do when I go to close. It's not going to push it. So now when it pushes it, it carves this out so that now you get this effect. So you carve this out, you get that effect. So you get more of a scalp effect. So this edge is softer. So think of it almost like a what a razor might do, but yet the, it still has a blunt carved edge to it. So yeah, there it is. I'll be doing the do's and don'ts of curly hair on April the 14th. That's next Tuesday. I want to do a class for you on uh, natural curly hair.
So now watch. When I go in and do this, watch this section here. Let's just go in and just close. Watch the hair move to that direction when I close. You see how it just slid that direction just slightly. So here's the hair. Look how it just moved that way. So now watch how you don't see any lines. Whereas if I take the blending shear and I close, it doesn't move. Look at that. Now you're seeing lines there. Let's go back to the invisible. So Sam, why did you create the shear? Because that's the invisible. <laughs> I love it. Look at the difference on that. So why did you create it? Because we knew that we were going to start layering hair. So because we started, there's the, there's the reversible blender. Up here is the invisible one. So what I wanted to do is to bond hair is the toughest hair to layer. So what I wanted to do is create a shear for you that actually gives you, watch this. It gives you a soft edge. Look, you don't see it. Whereas if I go in with the blending shear, watch. I go in with the blending shear way up here where I was or down here. Watch. Look at, look at, look at, look at the weight. You can almost see the weight inside of it. So it's important that once again, it goes back to the concept of when I started this class was understanding your tools and how they work and what it is that they do. That's so critical, guys. So we've talked about the reversal blender and the invisible blend. Let's go back to the reversible blender. And let me share with you a technique in case when I have a client that has a side part. And if she says to me, this part keeps falling in my face, Sam, it just keeps falling in my face, what would you suggest to help her? Now, let's talk about something. First of all, to get a side part, to have a side part, you need length. So I have to have length in order for this to move to the side. So if, if I don't have length and it, doesn't, it, doesn't, it won't move because the shorter the hair, the hair is, the more growth pattern takes over. The longer the hair is, the more gravity takes over. So with a side part, you want length. But what's making it collapse could be growth or it could be weight, growth. That's solved. The solution for growth is solved by blow drying a fringe area with a fine coat, fine, hair, fine teeth of the comb. Now you solve that. But let's talk about if they had length and they complain about it doesn't stay the side. So let's go through here again. And let's take a look at what happens here. All right. So where's your face? Here it is here. Now watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to get this hair here. Let's talk about this. I'm going to get this hair to move over like that. Okay. And if you look at it, look how it just kind of kind of tends to collapse. All right. So watch. I'm going to use a blending shear. Okay. Here's the blending shear. And I know that I want this hair to move that direction. So I'm standing on the opposite side. I take a diagonal forward slice. I over direct it. So be aware when you texturize hair, understand lines, angles, everything that it does. So now watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this angle, this particular angle, and all I'm simply going to do is I'm going to angle the same way that I was taught in beauty school. That's correct, students. Pay attention to your teachers. They know what they're talking about. Okay. If I go in diagonal like this, look what I'm creating. I'm creating short to long. So now watch what I want to do. I want to take out weight. So I weave short to long, weave it. Now I close and I backstroke. Open, close, backstroke. Now I know you're probably cringing, but this is incredible in terms of how it works. Sam, why do you backstroke on that? Let's just take a look at this section. Watch. Watch this hair here. Okay. Watch. I'm going to try and give it to you. Watch when I when I take this. Watch this. Let's hold it this way so you can see it. Take a look at this hair here. Now watch. When I go through and I close and I backstroke, watch this hair here. Watch it move. You see it move? Now I close on the same spot, but it's never the same line because I'm moving the hair. So I'm getting variations of lengths inside of that. So that's why I'm back combing this. Now notice how I comb it out. Look how I turn the comb vertically, just like I've talked about the paddle brush. Turn it vertically. Now once I have it that direction, watch. Now you saw how heavy this was. And now watch, I'm just simply by taking out weight, watch the movement I'm starting to get. You see that? See how I'm starting to do it? Now take another diagonal forward section. Take all of that section, even the hair that you cut before. Now watch me weave short to long. Okay. Now close and backstroke. Open, close, backstroke. Open, close, backstroke. I know this looks horrible, guys, but it's such an effective technique. If you used it before, give me a big yes on it. But it's just great. Watch how I still have this length. Look at the length. But now I've got short angles, multi-level layering by creating that. And look how I'm opening up the eye. You can just start to see how that's opening up a lot more. 
What I also love about this is this gives it this floating technique. So anytime I want that hair to flow, it just has a natural common tendency to flow. So just give me a yes if you learned something from that one. And once again, that's back combing. That's a back comb and blunt with a reversible blender with a thinning shear. It's just a great way to go in and take it out. Okay. So let's take a look now and let's go on to the idea of spacing. So spacing. This is a great technique that I like to use on hair that has natural movement to it. And anyone that says to me that they say, I wear my hair natural. I don't blow dry my hair. This is a great technique for them. And it's called spacing. So what we want to do is I want to go in. And now this one is also great for natural curly hair. And uh, this is the idea of just getting variations of length as you're working with this. So what we want to do is we're going to take a section. Now watch. I'm going to bring it down because I'm going to elevate this so you can see. All right. So let's take a section. Now watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this section and watch me go to a number three. So I take three fingers, and this time the middle finger stays on top there, and now I'm here. Okay, so I just flip. So all I did is just simply weave that through. Now watch me point. So I touch, close on the way out. And now watch me move across. But look at my left hand. It continues to slide up as I'm going. So I'm getting variations of length. So let's take a look so you can see what th that did. Look how that just took out weight. But what's cool about this is this will just start to give me a little bit more enhancement, especially if they wear something natural. So let's say, for example, here's natural. All right. So let's just go through. And here's what I would do. I simply just come through. Okay. And I just take a section. Okay. Once you have your section, let's get some links so you can really see it. Okay. Now watch. I want you to simply come through and reverse it. Okay, see, I've got that. So I just weaved it just like in between my fingers. Now watch me. I'm going to come closer to so you see. Now watch how I will touch, close on the way out. It's close on the way out so you're not cutting your fingers. So I don't close on the way in. I touch, close on the way out. And then look at my left hand as it slides up slowly. And I just keep moving back and forth to the left, to the right. So that what I do on um, natural movement, I just start taking out some of that hair so I get a little bit more response. So that's called spacing, and that is a great technique to work with movement or with the hair that has a little bit more natural curl to it. All right, so now let's go into uh, scanning. Scanning is a technique right now that I'm really working with in terms of what I'm doing. Uh, don't forget, guys, by the way, I'm happy to say that we were scheduled to do the ABS show, the America Beauty Show in Chicago. As we all know, that's been canceled. So at San Villa, we believe the show must go on. So on April the 19th and the 20th, myself and the art team, Jesse Linares and Anna Peters and my man, Andrew Crothers, were all going to be doing 45-minute segments all day long on the 19th and the 20th. So get cozy, get some coffee in the morning, have your drinks ready for the afternoon, but we're going to go all day, 45 minutes segments so you'll get to see everything in terms of that so don't forget that sunday and monday what time sam it is from 11 p.m 11 a.m eastern standard time to 8 p.m eastern standard time for you on the pacific coast that is from eight to five don't miss it my friends lots of stuff anna peters is going to be doing some long hair and she is awesome i love watching it. all right so now let's go to scanning scanning is something that we're doing a lot and there's a man I have a lot of respect for, Ludovic, Ludovic Beckers, uh, a man that, oh, man, that guy can cut some hair. He is incredible. Make sure you follow him and watch him. But this is something that I saw Ludovic doing. It wasn't new to me, but I loved how Ludovic explained it and how he's using it in his cuts and just about everything he was doing. Even though he's getting these beautiful geometric shapes, think about it. Everybody's looking for softer edges that enhance his movement in the hair. So let's talk scanning. So what you want to do is just take a section. So this would be done like if instead of going in and precision cutting something like this, what I want you to do is start thinking about instead of that being so blunt and heavy and then re rely on your texturizing afterwards, what I want you to do is scan that section. So watch what I mean, Look how that section is now. So watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to take, hold the hair with a palm to me. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come through, put the comb down so it doesn't get in the way. All right, now watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to come out to my edge here. I'm going to scan that length off. So now watch how I take the guiding blade is placed right on that ring finger. Now the angle of this is just very, look at, it's almost straight up and down vertical. I just tilt it maybe to an 11.25, 22.5, 22 
0.50 for my degree cutters. But it's not so much at a diagonal 45. That's too chunky. I want this to be a very soft edge. Now watch, just like a computer scan. Just start opening and closing. Just start. Now just slide that guide gliding bait. Just slide that gliding bait right across. Look how I just slide it across my finger. Now watch the edge that I get. Let's take out more hair for you. Watch. And look how I'm just slightly on a diagonal, but not a street extreme 45. And I just work my way across. Okay, now watch this edge. Look at that edge. How that edge is much softer than the previous edge cutting it blunt. So now it's all about stay precision, okay, on scanning. So watch my next section. Oh, no, Sam. Okay, I'm going to toss one in, this one and give it away. I just tossed it to you. Who got it? Okay, let's take a section diagonal forward, bring it up and over. Now watch. Follow my guide. There's my guide. I can see my guide. There's my guide. Okay, so I'm going to come through now, and I'm just going to take and place my hand there. That's my guide. Now watch me set up my angle. Now watch me just open and close. And now watch me just work my way across. And I'm working primarily with the tip of the shear. But look how I'm getting just soft little edges just inside. Just like a computer scanning. When it scans the way it looks visually. Now you can just start to see when I release that edge, it's got a little bit more degree of softness to it. And it's not completely blunt. So scanning, a great, great way to go in and texturize hair in terms of that. So. That's a good one. All right. So let's see if I've got any questions. All right. If you're enjoying this, just give me a thumbs up. Give me a yes. Give me an emoji, a smile or something just to let me know where we're at. So scanning. Now, let's talk about that because some people say, well, you're point cutting. Point cutting, it's depth. You're adding more depth to it. Okay. And then there's notching and chipping. So point cutting, scanning versus chipping versus notching versus scanning. Is it interesting the language that we have? Notching is just another form of point cutting. Chipping is another point, a form of point cutting. And scanning is another form of point cutting. But let's talk about point cutting. So let's say that I really want to soften the inside of this line. Now I'm going to point cut it. So I like lifting these sections up. And what I like doing is I like going in, guys, and I like fanning that section. So I'm going to bring it down a little lower so you can see. Now watch me fan this. Now all I'm going to do is take my thumb place it right in the pocket of my fingers, and now just make a fist. Now I fan that section. Now watch the shear stay parallel to the floor to that section. Now watch me just move the fan to that. What Moving the fan to that, what I've done is I've taken out weight, but I maintain the halo of length. Now, Sam, why do you fan it? If I didn't fan this, guys, and I just lift this up, my eye tells me there's a lot of weight there. You need to be really extreme with your your taking in and point cutting sand. But if I come through and I and I don't fan, now my eye sees a lot of weight, I'm going to get aggressive. The hair doesn't fall down just in this area. Watch. When I release this, watch it expand. It expand from here to there. So expand your fan, the degree of the hair itself, see it visually more fanned out so you can determine a little bit more how you're taking weight out. Now look at that. See on parallel? So I'm not taking off length. I am taking off weight. If I want to take off length, look at the angle. I angle. Now watch me come in. Look at my hand. See how I've got my hand? I'm not turning this way to come in the fan. Look at my wrist. Turn this way where palm is away from you. I know it's awkward at first, but eventually you'll become comfortable with it. Why, Sam? Because now you can control the angle of the blade. If the angle is too flat and you say, I'm going to point cut, boom, 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 you can see what you did was you chipped more at it. You notched it or chipped at it. So that's a big difference. So what's important here to understand what I'm trying to teach you is the angle of when we go in and we cut. So it's the angle of this when we point cut. Watch again. There. Watch me fan. Now watch me take off length this time. So look at the angle. So now see how I took that length off. I chipped at it. Okay. Now watch me come back through and watch me fan. Now let's soften that weight within that section, and now look how I fan. Okay, so now watch this section. How what I've done is I've made those ends much lighter and a little bit area, so they respond to a round brush. I think point cutting is so critical. Scanning is so critical today in terms of when we're cutting hair. I find us getting back to a lot of discipline when we cut hair. But let's, even when we texturize, make sure that you understand Texture is all visual, 
and feel. There's just no way to cross check texture. So please understand that the hair is a living fabric and you're guaranteed nothing. Just cut it and discover. And now while we have the time, it's the time to get these mannequins out and try all these techniques and find out what's working for you. All right. So now that was the idea of discovering how point cutting works, how scanning works, how notching and chipping. Remember, notching and chipping. I remember showing this to my dad. Dad, look what I learned. And I went like this. And he said, what do you call that, Sam? I said, that's point cutting. And he said, son, that's notching. He was a barber. And I thought, wow, the language. But he said, look at the weight. See how that has more weight to it? So now this might be great for fine hair. Once again, understand the fabric. Fine hair needs a little bit more bluntness. Now, I could come back in once I put that. Then I might come back in and rake with a razor to give it a little bit more response. Remember, guys, visual and feel. That's how you cross-check texture. There's just no way that you can cross-check check it te technically as I would a precision haircut. Okay. Um, all right. So if you, I have a question here, Katie, can we see more techniques with the blending shears that have bigger negative space notches? Okay. When you have that, this would be the shear of your choice. And this one goes, I, I open up the class showing this particular shear. Okay. That has a lot of notches in it that you can see. All right, Katie. So there was a technique that I showed earlier that was spacing. So with the blending shears, you can get it. Watch what I'll do. I'll do it with the blending shears for you because you're asking. Never fear. Sammy is here. So let's take the blending shears. Now watch. Okay. So if I wanted to have uh, with the blending shears that have bigger negative space and notches, then here's what I want you to do. Then I want you, when you weave the blunt lay, I want you to get a big piece. Go deep, get a big piece. Go deep, get a big piece. Go deep, get a big piece. Go deep. Now look how I got that. Now open and close. Now watch how I created all that negative space inside there with the blending shear. So it's a great way to do it with a blending shear. You could do that. How do I know which blade to use and how do you implement, implement each one? Okay. So let's talk. Is that a razor question, James, or is it a shear question? All right. Remember, shear blocks it off. Razor is, uh, gives it more of a softer pointed edge. So how do I know which blade to use and how do you implement each one? We've been talking about that. So make sure you just go back and take a look at that as you can. All right. Now let's take a look. So, cause I've been talking about all kinds of the reversible, the blending shear, reversible blender. I want to go into now the idea of, let's see, slide cutting. So I'm going to grab my slide cutting shear, which is a great shear. Oh no. All right. For some reason, I don't have my side side cutting. Hey guys, sorry we lost Sammy. I just got a message from him that his Wi-Fi kicked off. So I guess uh, we're wrapped for the day. So thank you so much for watching. The replay will be available as soon as I click the button to end the broadcast. So see y'all.